So these five steps of the process, how did I get these? You'll notice they all correspond to one of the five bodies of our being. The first thing I learned when I got into Kriya Yoga in 1968, can you believe it? Was that we have five bodies, physical, emotional, mental, intellectual, and spiritual, and that we can work on these bodies individually. And each is a different plane of existence. So uh, the process that I put together, we work, we address each of these planes. And by aligning each of the planes, we reach an optimal place of being able to move into direct experience of our feelings, which is what needs to happen for them to dissipate. The uh, probably the second primary premise that the work is based on after the first, which is you have the stuff trapped in the subconscious, is that you need to experience it to release it. First step, deep relaxation. That's the physical level. That's where uh, we are concerned with brain waves, the brain. And uh, of course, just to mention this for a minute, I believe there's a huge misdirection over, you know, the blind leading the blind, this huge emphasis on neuropsychology is going to lead nowhere as far as I can tell. It's all, the brain is not the originator of consciousness. The brain is only the transmitter of consciousness to the physical plane. So I'd like you to view it that way. But we do get concerned with brain waves and we shift into the alpha state where the brain waves get lowered. So you're starting to approach the um, right brain, body centered, being in the moment experience. So coming into the moment through the body is where the transformation occurs. If you're not into the, if you're not into the moment, you're still in the mind. And it's hard to release negative emotions when you're in the mind. You have to start shifting into the body-based, right brain-based, in the moment experience. That's why I tried to emphasize this in the beginning. And that's what meditation is about, really. It's learning how to move into the moment to be present with your experience. Okay, so that's deep relaxation. We use the breath to facilitate deep relaxation. And then uh, step two, awareness, is the intellectual plane. So uh, on the intellectual plane, we start to go to the feeling behind the event or the circumstances that we're being concerned with. So what is the feeling that's coming up? And there are different types of feelings. There can be first level feelings like anger, uh, reactive emotions, <clears throat> but then there's a core feeling. So you can be angry about being rejected. Being rejected is the core feeling. You can be angry or depressed about being a failure about this sense of insignificance. That's the core feeling. So we always try to shoot for the core feeling. That's part of the awareness and then work with that. And we also try to recognize intellectually the projection process, which uh, by which these feelings become projected onto external circumstances, interactions, or attract circumstances that really do seem to correspond to the feelings. So we seem to be entirely justified 
in thinking that that thing caused my feeling, but that's still a projection from our standpoint. That's uh, step one, awareness, intellectual. Step two is the mental plane. Intellectual is where we have wisdom. Mental is where we calculate and do. So on the mental plane, usually we're in this state of unconscious rejection of the feeling. So we just want to become aware of that and see if we can move out of unconscious rejection into not, we don't have to go as far as loving the feeling. We just have to move to a place of neutral acknowledgement and what we call acceptance, being okay with the feeling. I'm no longer resisting that feeling. I'm not promoting it. I'm not cheering it. I'm not rejecting it. I'm just neutral with that feeling. It's there. That's enough to change the resistance that we're normally applying. Then we've set the stage. The mind has, in moving into acceptance, has opened the gate so we can now effectively see what's happening in the emotional level. And that's happening in the body. So we shift to the body. We become aware of body awareness. We find the feeling in the body. We breathe into it. We may find the chakra that it's related to. We move into the moment by being with the body. And that's where we just experience the feeling. And then as we're experiencing, we bring in the spiritual level, which is witnessing, and we detach. We make the conscious effort to disidentify, detach, step back, experience as if from the higher self, viewing the emotion. And even if you've got, you know, terrible emotions, painful emotions, and of course, we're working with terrible, painful, severe experiences, trauma of all types. You can be in that witnessing place, and you can be in a place of calmness, relaxation, because you've transcended. You're just relaxing and witnessing the chaos in the lower self. So that's briefly what it is. Any questions or comments about that? Uh, I just wondered um, about resentment. Is that an emotion? Um, deal with it in the same way? I would say resentment is a first level emotion like anger. Uh, a lot of these emotions can be there's not always a, a definite line but what's the resentment about? There's something that you're resented, resentful about. So that would be the core feeling whatever that is. Um, hi, I had a question. Yeah, sure. Hi. Um, and I'm wondering, like, I think you said the first step was uh, relaxation. And my issue has been that I have this, like, really strong tension in my face. And um, I, I think it um, might be emotional or fear-related, but it just prevents me from relaxing a lot. So I've tried a lot of guided meditations and stuff, and it's just very distracting. And I don't know if you have um, suggestions for that. Yeah. Any kind of body sensation, tension in the body, pain, uh, the thing you're describing, we would attribute it as a physical manifestation of a deeper emotional negativity. So when we go into the deep relaxation, we try to relax the body as best as possible. 
but if some parts are not able to relax, then we make that thing uh, the focus of our uh, process. So you would go through the steps and then just focus on the tension in your face. You know, just witness it, relax into it. There's probably rejection associated with it because you don't want it, right? You think it's not helping you. Right. Reverse that rejection, move mm -hmm. into acceptance and experience the tension. And at some point it's gonna to start to dissipate. Okay. okay, thank you. I have a question. Sure. Uh, you have the intellectual and mental plane. So I take the intellectual to be the conscious part and the mental is the unconscious part. No, no. The intellectual is what I, is the witnessing, I mean, is the uh, wisdom section. That's where you form your opinions and maybe even beliefs. Mental plane is where you uh, make plans. Like someone can be very wise, but not be mentally strong. You can imagine that, right? Someone yes. can be not very wise, but they can be mentally strong. You can imagine that as well, right? So they're acting out mentally, but their values are, let's say, distorted. They don't have good values, beliefs. So that's how I see it. Look, um, I was interested in what you mentioned about the feeling, the first level feeling or emotion, and then the core emotion. And I just, would, would you be able to further develop that, you know? How do you get that feeling uh, underneath the first level emotion? How do you find the core feeling yeah. under the first level emotion? Yeah. Y yeah. That's a good question too. Because, uh, in fact, that's a great question. Because most of the, m most of the time, I'd say uh, most, most clients I work with are only aware of the first level feeling. So the first level feeling is an active emotion like, you know, anger, depression, uh, sadness. And fear can be a first level or a core feeling as well. So it just comes up as you do the work. As you go into the alpha state and stay with the uh, first level emotion, being present with that, the core level will eventually come into view. Happens spontaneously. Now, if you're working with a therapist, they might point you in that direction a little bit and give you some clues, but we'd never try to uh, lead a client into discovering their core feelings. The client usually has to discover it on their own, but it, it usually happens. Well, I am asking this because this happened to me just a couple of days ago, spontaneously. So what, what happened? Day, well, I was meditating and then I was interrupted by my spouse and I got angry and I could really feel the anger rising. Why is he not, uh, obey, you know, right. respecting the limits? my boundaries, but I stayed with this anger and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm still meditating. And then I was asking somehow in my meditation, what is this all about? And suddenly I got this answer. It's about my self uh, value, self, you know, something related to myself, which came after the feeling first the anger. And that was quite an interesting, uh, you know, insight what I experienced. And did you get a core feeling? I think I, I felt self-worth that, you know, something related to my self-worth. That's a great insight. That's, that could very likely be what it is. Uh, self-worth, not being respected. These would all be a solar plexus chakra in our terminology, significance center, my sense of significance. So I'm not being respected. I'm not being valued. Um, and the feeling that 
that would be the feeling. That would be the core feeling that comes up. So you stay with, you stay with that. Yeah, let's see, that's great. And when the anger came up, that was the correct thing to do. Instead of reacting to the anger or getting angry about the anger, you just say, okay, anger is now coming up from the subconscious, being triggered by attracting, projecting from this experience. So maybe that'll help you get past blame. We hope that will help you get past blame. You take responsibility for the experience and then you say, okay, so anger's here. Breathe into it. And because I mentioned this in the book and other places, when I started out meditating, you know, as I said, 1968, I did this for 20 years. And whenever a negative feeling came up, I would reject that feeling, thinking I had a bad meditation. You know, what the hell? Why am I having this crappy meditation? Why is anger coming up? I'm pissed off, you know? So that, like a dead end. Eventually, I put it all together and I realized this is the subconscious coming up. And it's the opportunity. Okay. Great. Thanks for the question. Good. May I? Marie Therese. Hey, hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, John. Um, I have a question. There's I have a client and it is already very um, difficult for her to come into her body, to go with the in, inside of her body because she gets fear and she gets there's a trauma behind, even if she doesn't know really exactly what it is, but already coming in body is so fearful. Well, that's what we want. We want the we want the feelings to come up. You have to enlighten her about what's happening. The, if fear comes up, that's nothing to be afraid of. Don't be afraid of the fear. Understand that this is the opportunity to work with those feelings right change her mindset it sounds like she's in rejection like she's just what i described a minute ago she's in rejection of the negative stuff when it's coming up that's great if you're doing yoga um, meditative yoga starts to release the feelings she can't and then, even go to a meditation state pardon me very she can't even go into a meditative meditative state uh, okay so, so, so you just have to go slow with somebody like that, you know, you have to make sure they understand the direction that we want to go, which is accessing our feelings, and that the point is to bring up the feelings in yoga, breath work, meditation, right? And we want the feelings to come up. She just needs to understand what we're doing. And then she just go slow. She probably, uh... that's, you know, that's why. That's, re that's really a, a good comment because it, it reminds us <clears throat> that uh, just opening to your feelings is, can be like a major step for a lot of people. They're not aware of their true feelings. Feelings are repressed. Repression means the feeling never even comes into consciousness, but it's automatically pushed down before it has a chance to come into consciousness. So feelings get repressed. And uh, it's a major step. A lot, of, a lot of traditional psychotherapy, when, when we did have psychotherapy, you know, back 20, 30 years ago, would be just getting somebody in touch with their feelings. That would be like a primary primary goal, and maybe even considered to be a successful outcome to the therapy. You're now in touch with your feelings. You weren't before. That's what caused you to act out uncontrollably. That's what's behind your addictions. Now that you have these, now that you're in touch with your feelings, that's the first step. But you need to know how to work with your feelings and manage them, and that's what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah, my question is on in, in the witnessing. I struggle with that a little bit and just wondered if you could say any more about that kind of detaching to the higher self. I think sometimes the emotions can feel so overwhelming, particularly with anger or grief. Like I just feel like I'm caught in it. Yeah. It's yeah. I think it's just practice, just developing that capacity to detach and witness. That's what meditate regard meditation as practicing shifting into the witness. You know, if you're, if you're watching your breath, when you're meditating, witness the breath, witness the body, start developing the capacity. And then <clears throat> there's the third eye, which is like the, you know, the super semi-secret of shifting into the witnessing altered state. Start working with the third eye more in your meditation, just like, <clears throat> so you look up, the third eye is the witnessing center. And also it's the center of integrating left and right brain. So that's why we focus on it. It, it serves to integrate left and right brain and the lack of integration of left and right brain is proposed to be one of the major reasons why uh, feelings don't integrate. There's this split, you know, we're split from the subconscious. So integrating left and right brain, focusing on the third eye, and then using the third eye to transcend, to lift above the issue, accepting both light and dark, positive and negative, not being, not trying to avoid the negative or being addicted to the positive. Um, I have a question in yeah. working with clients. Yeah, great. Um, what happens a lot is that they, we, we talk before the session about what's up for them. And they don't, I mean, some people really can recognize the feelings they're having. But recently I heard the word somatophobic to relate to how many of us don't have an easy time feeling what we're actually feeling or knowing what we're actually feeling. Or like you said, you know, we immediately deny it or repress it through all the various ways we've learned to do that. And so, so often a session becomes um, not knowing what they're really working with as we go into it in a sense, because it hasn't, they really haven't gotten down to feelings yet. Right. Uh, That's fine. And then, and then when they go through the relaxing induction part of the session, they uh, they get so happy and free that they never get in touch with feeling other than that. <laughs> and that happens to lots of people. You know, they just, uh -huh. they start feeling so good because the meditation induction is so wonderful that they just hang out there the whole rest of the session and they see purple yeah. light, and white light, and yeah. all these things. But just, on the just, just, just br bring them back, you know, bring them back to it. You have to, that's maybe one of the, the dangers of the, it's not a danger, but, you know, one of the associated problems with, uh, with the process. Yeah, you don't want to get stuck in the, this is like getting stuck in uh, La La Land, right? That's the new age thing. You get stuck in the higher self when you're able to access it, but you have to go back to the negative. So I think if you, from that point, if you say, okay, we're going to work with the negative, focus on your issue visualize that issue use your mind power to visualize that issue and let feelings come up that's probably all we can say there's definitely a lot i can do to help them remember what was triggering them before but they often don't get to the actual feeling yeah. itself. Yeah. well <clears throat> the other thing is and maybe that's okay you know maybe what they need at that point is just is just to experience this blissful place. So let's reframe our attitude about that. You know, if they're if they have a great time and it's beneficial, yeah. then yeah. you can consider that they're going to come back for another session, or you're teaching them something valuable. You know, just going into the relaxed place is beneficial. So look at it from that standpoint. You don't have to. You don't have to have necessarily. A, an agenda or a goal. 
uh, give the agenda to the higher self. You're going through all the steps. You're hinting about the right direction, but uh, give up the session to higher guidance. I'd like to ask a question. Sure, sure. So I have similar problems and my stomach has started paining so bad that I had to take medicine while we were busy. Is that also related? You're experiencing pain in your stomach? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we would we we would probably assume that uh, you know, you can assume that any kind of physical manifestation is based on emotional holdings. That may not always be the case, but it's not a bad starting place. But if you, if you especially think that you have similar feelings, then you know, it's very likely a connection. So just like I was saying earlier, regard body symptoms as um, overflow into the physical body, resulting in physical symptoms. And you can use those physical symptoms as a focus point for your emotional clearing meditation. Yeah, that was my next question. Okay, yeah. so I'll yeah. yeah, you can either focus on the body or the emotions, or both. Uh, eventually, I think it's always better to have the emotions, but uh, if you start out with the body, that's good enough. That's like Vipassana. And then you'll come into the emotions, and then you work with the emotions. So, you know, stomach, what, what kinds of feelings are you having? Helplessness, chakra, second chakra? Lack of safety. Safety, okay. So uh, first center, survival center issues, yeah. Good. Okay. okay. I, I just didn't think that was related to. This. Yeah, I think it could be related. You, just, you can't really tell how these energies manifest necessarily. You just go with whatever comes up. Okay. So, so it might be something else for you. You know, it might be nurturing, for example. Who knows? Um, so, that so could you. Be it. So I you, think you're. you're <laughs> okay. So you stay with whatever you have and uh, work with that. Okay, good, thanks. Anybody else? Would it be fair to say that we have buttons, we have these buttons or triggers sure. that were installed by our families and then they're pushed by others in our adult relationships. So through this work, we uninstall those buttons. So that way I'm not bothered and feel the need to have this conversation about how what you said was hurtful. Yeah. Like, because if I'm clean, then I'm not triggered. Yeah. The way I see it is we come into this life with our karma, which is our unconscious subconscious. And then we attract all kinds of childhood events based on the subconscious that we bring into this life. And you could say that's where the buttons get installed you know, childhood trauma, experience in the family. Th those are all formative things, but we attract those experiences corresponding to our unconscious karma or our subconscious. So that would enable us to take responsibility and not blame our family or our childhood experiences. You can recognize that you're getting triggered because of a traumatic childhood experience but that childhood experience only crystallizes what's in the subconscious. It's not the original formative event. I have an elderly friend who is very depressed right now. She even has a plan to take her life hmm. and, um, because of the whole situation of being quarantined and isolated. Um, could you just, help me out here. I don't know how to, I want to reach out to her. I want to help her, but because of the quarantine, I can't. Um, well, you can't, what can we do for people like that? Like who are just severely, I don't know, I don't know why you can't, I don't know why you can't help with her, help with her because of the quarantine. You mean you can't go visit her and stay 10 feet away? Yeah. Well, I could wear a mask. Yeah. I want to. Um, but in terms of this, this process that you've just gone through, um, is there, how can I introduce this process to her to help her um, come out of this? Well, you have to be, 
you know, reasonably centered to be able to use this process. Okay. S somebody who's on the verge of suicide is probably not going to be open to it or even capable of it. So at that point, the best thing is to provide just some kind of basic support, okay. positive vibes until they get, this is not an emergency uh, solution. It's not for crisis, in other words. It's not, it's not, yeah, it's not for crisis. For me. For usually, crisis. It's, usually it's not for crisis. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I read your book about four years ago, and I then went on a transformation coaching program. So I've been doing a lot of this work for the last four years, and I've learned so much. But it makes such a difference for you to talk a steward, I think, you know, just to guide you along because it's very hard to maintain your your consciousness, your awareness. Your mind tends to wonder. Uh huh. But that was really great because I think I really you helped me with the core issue that's been bothering me for the last four years. <laughs> great, thank you, thank you. Don't remember, uh, or remember, I have the uh, emotional clearing guided meditation program on the website. Which oh, I'll have a look at that. Can do the yeah. same thing for you. That's Great. what that's what it's designed to do. Mm. But thanks for sharing. Anybody else? The um, the part about when you ask for an image is it? I mean, I, I'm assuming it can be anything. Does sure. it tend to be something from your past? Can it be an image that's not a, a memory? That's a, Sure, anything. Or... Yeah, anything. Okay. Yeah. Fantasy or an actual image. Sure. And then you and then you stay with that image and let that evoke feelings. Maybe I didn't explain that, but that's that's the purpose of the image is to evoke uh, more feelings. Yeah, cause it can be totally imaginary or anything. Okay. It's not that it's supposed to be something from your past that's relevant to what. No, okay. no, but that's that's when a, a recall will usually come up if it's going to come up, or many times uh, people will get past life flashes mm -hmm. at that point as well. So we just uh, allow whatever is ready to come up to come up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you um, for the process because um, it's really been, you know, when you, you've got something and it drops you right in. For me, it went right back into some birth trauma. And, um, you know, you always think, oh, I've been here, I've done this. But it's interesting how the most innocuous of situations can take you right back into something. Uh -huh. The feelings, you know, they're really deep core feelings. So I thank you for that. Right. It's right. good to be reminded that you can come back to this you can come back and just be patient with the body and allowing it. So thank you. Bye -bye. Right. Great. Thanks for commenting. Thank you.